We've just got to Ruapuna for the last round of the Endurance Championship and neither Ben or I have driven here before so it's been pretty daunting. Uh, it's quite a tricky track, uh, particularly the centre section of the track is quite tight, there's a lot of sharp corners. We put in uh, probably a couple of hundred laps each on a set of Corsa, our simulator, and to be honest um, it does actually really help at least you know which way the track's going. So at the moment the car has been suffering from some pretty bad understeer. We just softened the front sway bar, that made a big improvement, but we are running for our practice day just on our old hand kooks, and we've just made the decision to swap back to our Michelins. At Highlands we found the Michelins were just so much better than the hand coot, so it's not a lot of point practicing on a tyre we're not going to race on tomorrow and we're not going to probably learn a lot so we'll see how the Michelin's go in this next session. Between Highlands and Ruapuna we've made some changes to the fuel system. Uh, we were having problems where we couldn't run the fuel very low at all. How many litres did you say? 16 we were getting surged. And now we're down to like 3. Um, which really limits your options with pit stops. With this system, which we've installed two radium surge tanks on each side of the tank, feeding a radium surge tank, uh, we are able to get down to 5 litres. We've just been black flagged for having fuel leaking out of the right rear of the car as we go around our left hand corner. We've diagnosed that as fuel sloshing out of the tank, coming out of the vent hose, not being stopped by the discriminator valve, um, and, then, and then getting out onto the track, which is obviously not ideal. Brandon's hard at work now, mounting that discriminator valve higher inside the boot of the car, and we're gonna run a piece of hose off the top of it to hopefully prevent that from happening. Ran out of brakes at the uh, end of the straight, went through the gravel trap. Kind of had to throw it sideways a little bit to keep it off the wall. Uh, it was reasonably exciting. Uh, the worst bit is I uh, forgot to turn the GoPro on, so um, you just have to take my word for it that I was a hero. Saved it. At the end of the front straight, the fastest bit of the track, uh, fastest braking zone, I um, hit the brakes and basically didn't have enough. Um, which was amplified by a choice to brake quite late into that corner too. Got it back to the pits and the guys took the wheels off, inspected the brake pads and we've basically got no front pads on the front right. And turns out you definitely need those if you want to stop. So uh, now we're scrambling to see if we can get another set of brake pads tonight or tomorrow morning that we can bang at this and have a possibility of racing. Um, we... Can you pass me my hat for the next section? Because yep. I want to look real pretty.
day one finished practice day day of highs and lows uh, obviously Ben's little excursion off the track at 230 odd k into turn one pretty exciting but he managed it pretty well because the car's still intact so we've got this brake issue that we're working through we've got some new pads to go in it tomorrow it's probably kind of a bit of a band-aid we're going to try and add some more brake cooling as well because otherwise we're just going to smoke these new pads uh, if we can get on top of that pretty confident that we should be able to get through a one hour race on the upside, both Ben and I managed to do pretty representative lap times down into the 31, so pretty happy there. Car's handling well, feels really balanced down on the track, got some fresh rubber to go on in the morning, so that'll, that'll be good. And on top of that, we seem to be on top of our fuel pressure issue, which has kind of chased us around both Teratonga and Highlands. So it'll be nice, fingers crossed, to get a clean race where we can actually race hard and get to the finish, so looking forward to it. here at Ruapona and last night we had to make some brake pads fit. Uh, we couldn't get the right size and apparently the front right kept getting pretty badly worn going into the first turn. So we got a new set of brake pads that I had to make fit but it should work for today. I uh, had to cut them with an angle grinder. It's uh, pretty dodgy but it seems to fit and work so We'll get it going. Uh, Ben's just gone out for his first scrub session, fed in the new brakes and the tyres, and we're going to get Andre into car to do qualifying. and it's not starting well. Ben's just gone out for a 10 minute scrub session on some fresh rubber and ended up after a few laps with a lot of smoke coming out the back of the car. And this is a problem that we've had the entire endurance championship and it's to do with the drive shaft shop axles that we're running in the rear of the car and essentially they seem on all accounts to be just a touch too short. When we put the drive shaft shop 1000 horsepower axles side by side with stock they're around about 15 millimeters shorter than stock so we think that basically what's happening is just applying enough pressure to the drive shaft shop axle that it's pulling it past the circlip that retains it inside of the div and it just pops it out and then of course it's leaking oil out onto the exhaust. So we're in a bit of a predicament here, we've got qualifying in about 15 minutes, then after that we've got a 40 minute gap until the race, it's not really enough time so what we're going to try and do here, I'll go out and just do a handful of laps in quali, try and get a lap time that's at least borderline representative, get us somewhere up the field and we're going to come back in early and the boys are going to get to work changing the rear axles back to stock. That's actually a reasonably large job because we also have to change the wheel bearing assembly because we're running a larger drive shaft shop wheel bearing to go with a larger spline. So a little bit of work, not really what we needed. It was perfect all yesterday. We thought we were on top of it. That's racing.
and it was a really good start. I managed to pick off at least, I think, two positions during the rolling start, which was positive, and managed to settle into a rhythm pretty well. Managed to sort of catch up to the BB Nissan GTR, which is uh, actually in our class, so that one counts. Uh, chased him down for a good few laps. Uh, he's faster in a straight line, we're faster through the infield section. In the end, coming into turn one, he got held up by a slower car, managed to put a pass up the inside of him and held him off. Had a really good battle with the Audi TCR, who was uh, probably a little bit quicker than me, but managed to hold her off for my entire stint. So, pitted, came into the lane, the team were all set up in a pit space with our fuel ready to go, and in front of me was a Honda TCR pitted basically exactly where the team had set up, so I was already in pit lane, massive scramble to move everything across, and in that scramble, uh, only one of the fuel containers went in, so instead of getting our full 40 odd litres into the tank, we ended up only getting 25. So right now Ben's out there circulating, he's first in class, uh, we're not sure if he's going to get to the end, we've got about 12 minutes left to run, so fingers crossed, could be a little bit scary. Of an unfortunate end to the race there. We were in first place in our class, we had a good lead over second, then we broke an axle, uh, which is pretty pretty disappointing, pretty pretty heartbreaking. Showed that uh, the car had pace, we were doing well, our pit stop strategy worked, um, and just didn't end up with, with any results. So, good and bad. Um, and sometimes you got to take it like that. Were and you as, having any good battles? Nah, <laughs> nah. I was like battling the car. If you were to sum up the day, it would work. Broken. <laughs> <laughs> um, licorice all sorts. Terrible, but lots of different levels of terrible. Rip. Feels bad. Uh, rip. <laughs> Unfortunately, a DNF isn't the way we wanted to finish our last round of the South Island Endurance Series, but that is the hand we've been dealt. So, with that broken axle with nine minutes left to run, there's really nothing we could do about it. And it was a risk that we knew we were taking when we decided to swap from our drive shaft shop axles back to stock. We've got some work to do in the off season trying to figure out what's going on there. It doesn't help that those drive shaft shop axles appear to be 15 millimetres shorter than our standard axles. So we'll get onto drive shaft shop, figure out what's the problem there. So we've got a, a rock solid solution for next year. Despite that, got to take away some positives with the weekend. We were running in first place prior to that axle failure. I think uh, over the last three rounds that we've competed in, everyone's learned a lot. The team have worked really well together, and while Ben and I are driving the car, this really is a team effort and particularly the pit stops. We really need to make those pit stops work well and quickly uh, to be competitive on track. So really we are pretty happy with everything. At the end of the day the car didn't make it to the finish line, everyone's still smiling. We've got next year to see if we can improve on things but for now, time for a beer.